Well, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, this might come as a little bit of a surprise, but we're not actually technically speaking, talking about crime today. This happens once in a while, right? We cover other things. We talk about disappearances. Um, occasionally there's an occult sort of theme. It's not a hundred percent crime. And today is one of those days because today we will be talking about the Raelians. I needed to have something a little um, more lighthearted, dare I say, fun. Now, the Raelians are a cult of sorts, although based on everything I discovered in my research, I would have a hard time actually calling them a cult. But we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty of it later. The major tenet of this religion is that all human beings on Earth, as a matter of fact, like everything on Earth, was created by alien scientists. Now that sounded very wacky a couple of months ago, um, but considering that the U.S. government has all but confirmed the existence of extraterrestrial life and technology on this planet, um, it seems a little less wacky today. So given all of that, I thought that right now would be an excellent time to discuss, were the Raelians right? Have they been right this whole time? But to talk about that, we have to start with who the Raelians are. And who they are is an international religious sect that follows the teachings of extraterrestrial beings that they call the Elohim. These teachings are sent through the Elohim's earthly representative, Rael, the 76-year-old Frenchman who serves as both the only prophet of the movement and also, obviously, their namesake. Uh, also, he, he dresses like Rufus from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. Rael founded the Raelist movement in 1973 after an encounter he alleges he had with an actual Eloha, that's the singular form of Elohim, who came to visit him in a spacecraft in a remote part of France. Now, this extraterrestrial had sought Rael out specifically. It was not just a chance encounter. Rael was the chosen one to spread the message of the designers. And the Aloha gave Rael the instruction that he should spread the message of humanity's origins primarily by building an embassy. Uh, this embassy would be to welcome the Elohim when they return to Earth. And the building of this embassy remains the primary objective of Raelism. It is as of yet incomplete. As part of his mission to spread the message of the designers, Rael has penned several books on the subject. Some of their titles include Message from the Designers. It's a little on the nose. The Message Given to Me by Extraterrestrials, colon, they took me to their planet. You really know what you're getting with that one. There's also, let's welcome the extraterrestrials and yes to human cloning. We cannot forget sensual meditation. Those aren't all the books. I just picked a few of my favorites. And what is the message of the designers, according to Rael. Well, the Elohim are a species of humanoid scientists who created all life on Earth with advanced scientific techniques, cloning, and genetic engineering. So the Elohim wish for humanity to continue to pursue scientific advancement, including advancement in genetic engineering, and cloning. And the primary reason for this is that the Elohim promised that these technologies will help human beings essentially um, achieve eternal life and also just advanced mental capabilities and physical capabilities. While the Raelian movement does incorporate some spiritual and metaphysical elements to it, they are atheistic. They believe that traditional concepts of God are very outdated and that scientific advancement should begin taking the place of these archaic and outdated beliefs of religion. But they do believe that other religious leaders from Jesus to Muhammad 
to Buddha. I, I can't remember exactly. I think that they think there have been like 25 of these spiritual leaders that were, in fact, prophets of the Elohim, but that their message over time has been corrupted by humanity. Rael encourages his followers to practice sensual meditation, hence hence the book, which emphasizes connecting the physical senses to experience pleasure and a heightened awareness of the present moment. Rail also seems to use this form of meditation to actually make contact with the Elohim. And it's, it's my understanding that everyone is encouraged to connect with the Elohim in this way, but it is important to remember that Rael is the only prophet of Raelism. The movement also promotes peace, nonviolence, and respect for all life forms. They seek to eliminate war, nuclear weapons, and all violence from the world. Raelians are also known for advocating for various human rights, including gender equality, reproductive rights, and sexual freedom, because they believe that the Elohim created us basically for pleasure, that we as human beings are here to be creative, to relax, and to enjoy our life. And putting a lot of um, restrictions on human rights obviously would be the antithesis of that goal. We were not made by the Elohim to labor. And so a lot of their idea about technological advancement is basically in order that robots, like advanced technology, robots, whatever, will take over all the menial labor so that human beings are free to just pursue creative things, right? Whether that be science, arts, whatever it is, to do the things that we enjoy while the menial tasks are all taken care of by the technology that we create. They have always been staunch advocates for LGBTQIA rights. Um, they had an initiative in Africa, which they actually have quite a lot of followers in Africa. Um, they had an initiative there that they called Clit Aid, and the whole point was to get restorative surgery for um, people who had been victims of female genital mutilation. And they actually were pretty successful in this. They were able to perform about 25 of these surgeries before the government shut them down. They consider themselves to be anti-sexist. In fact, um, when they have their like events and stuff, a lot of the female members go topless because it's sort of a core part of their belief that it is unfair that men are allowed to go out in public topless and women aren't. Now, I can't help but feel that some of this maybe just a scotch, um, is because Rael would like to see more boobies. But hey, you know, sometimes the ends justify the means, I guess. For the most part, the Raelian movement supports people just kind of doing whatever they want as long as it meets a few basic criteria. One, that it does no harm to other people. Two, that it does not promote violence. And three, that it does not impede technological advancement. Now, despite the relative freedom, Raelians are encouraged to follow a certain moral code. And quite frankly, I think that perhaps we should all strive to follow the Raelian moral code. They're expected to take responsibility for their own actions, respect cultural and racial differences, strive for world peace, and share wealth and resources. Adherents are encouraged to give about 10% of their income as a tithing to the church to fund all of their various initiatives that they do. Um, it's not necessarily required, but I'll, I'm going to go into the hierarchy of the church and I'll talk more about that then. Now, another tenet of their religion that I found to be very interesting is that they are supposed to uphold democracy. And I thought that this was really interesting because we do not hear that very often when we're talking about these kind of culty groups. And as I looked into it, um, I found out that Rael believes in this idea called geneocracy, which is a, a word that he made up. It's of his own definition, as far as I can tell. Um, but basically, it describes a society that is run by geniuses or intellectuals. He sees democracy as the way 
through which we are going to achieve this geniocracy. But basically, the idea is that Congress, the president, parliament, all world government leaders should be chosen from a pool of people who meet certain criteria for problem solving capabilities and for creative intelligence. Eventually, the whole world is going to be run exclusively by people who are like the most intelligent and the most compassionate of all humanity. It actually it's it actually sounds like a dream, doesn't it? That sounds like a utopia. And that's the idea. The idea is that we try to create the the Elohim have created a utopia according to them and that we're supposed to try to make Earth more like the Elohim's utopia so that they can come in. And anyway, we're going to talk about it more later. The prophet also believes that more women should be in positions of power because their innate femininity makes them more caring, compassionate, peaceful, and balanced. Although it would seem that there are actually very few women in positions of leadership in the Raelian church. You know, as I was researching this group, I found myself asking more and more, sh should I be a Raelian? Because all that stuff seems pretty awesome. That's how they get you, right? Now, there is one little detail, and this seems to be the one thing that really seems to bother people, and that is that they promote a very liberal sex ed for children. I don't have a huge amount of detail on that, but I do know that one thing that the group preaches overall is self-gratification. So I don't know if um, that is a part of like, they think that children should be taught about that. Um, but I do know that anytime you start talking about comprehensive sexual education, people freak out about it. Even though study after study after expert after expert has agreed that teaching children about their bodies, the autonomy of their bodies, the correct anatomy of their bodies, and all of that prevents them from being exploited. And the Raelians are extremely strict on their no messing with kids policy. So, you know, I like I said, I don't have a huge amount of detail on this, um, but it, it sounds like they just want to teach children um, about their own bodies and about bodily autonomy. And some people don't think that's okay. And I do. I think that that's a good thing. Um, some of the other rules or guidelines that the Raelians are supposed to follow, um, they are supposed to keep their bodies healthy, especially by abstaining from drugs. Although some members do use alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, and also the group would prefer that their members not contribute to overpopulation. They are encouraged to not have any children. And if they must have children, to limit the number to two or fewer. Raelians are big advocates of birth control and abortion rights. Now, this is a much different concept, right? This is a hugely different concept to everything that we would consider to be a cult. Cults want more members. They want you to birth as many children into the cult as possible to grow their following. The Raelians do the literal opposite of that. They're like, please don't have children. We don't need, we've got too many people already. Please don't, just don't have any kids. Rael also claims that his father is an Eloha named Yahweh. And yes, this is the same Yahweh of the traditional Abrahamic religions. And that would make Rael and Jesus half-brothers. 
which he believes. He will tell you that he is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. So yeah, you can see pretty easily why people think these guys are a little off base, a little wacky. They have some interesting ideas at their core. It's hard to get a really good read on exactly how many followers this sect has, but it looks like it could be as many as 40 to 100,000 members worldwide. That is not a small following. Many followers live in Burkina Faso and South Korea, um, although Rael himself resides in Japan. He does travel all over the world, but his house is in Japan. And apparently the embassy is meant to be built or is being built in Switzerland. The Elohim were supposedly very specific Specific, that the um, embassy should be in neutral territory and Switzerland obviously is a very well known for being neutral territory. Um, although I did read something about the Swiss government not really wanting him and his followers around. Um, but uh, there's a few other countries like that too, where they've kind of like been asked to leave. Um, and they do, they don't really put up much of a fight about it, but it seems that everybody just thinks they're really weird. There's no like real specific complaints about it. They're just like afraid that they're a cult and that they're going to get out of hand. So a few places have been like, mm, go away. So I don't know if they've actually been asked to not be in Switzerland or if the Swiss government is just like, we've got our eyes on you kind of thing. I don't have a lot of specific details about that. But if you're surprised that you've never heard of this group for as widespread as they seem to be, um, so was I. And I think that this has to do with just their general lack of having any kind of controversy. They're sort of seen for the most part as, I mean, if not entirely wholesome, at least completely innocuous as far as cults go. Um, they did get into a little hot water when they publicly claimed that they had actually cloned a human baby. So let me back up. According to Raelian teachings, cloning would allow humanity to preserve their genetic heritage by creating perfect identical duplicates of themselves, right? That's what cloning is. This idea aligns with their beliefs in the Elohim's genetic engineering capabilities and their overall plan for humanity, which of course is for humans to achieve this technological advancement so that they can become immortal. Basically, we are promised everlasting life by the Elohim as long as we are, you know, good. <laughs> and we are chosen by them. Only the actual Elohim get to make the decision for who gets to uh, be immortal by continually passing on their genetic code. It's really not that different than the Christian principle of everlasting life, except that for Christians, this happens in an ethereal afterlife in heaven. And for um, Raelians, this exists in actual, real earthly life that you get to continually do over and over again, or just continue on with a as a clone. So your body, your actual body is mortal, and you will die, but then you're, you're brought back to life. Of course, this does not really address the issue of like the consciousness. I think that we all recognize that there is something inside of our meat suit that makes us us and is distinctly separate from the meat suit. So um, some people call it consciousness, some people call it a soul. And we have no reason at this point to think that just because you clone the physical body, which is what you can do with DNA, you can clone the physical body, but we have no reason to think that that is going to transfer the consciousness. In fact, based on um, our current understanding of the technology, this is unlikely. Um, what you would have is a new and distinct individual in the same that way that we recognize that identical twins are not the same person, despite the fact that they have identical genetic information. But perhaps the aliens have an answer for this conundrum. And Raelians themselves don't really believe in a soul. Um, so they're 
kind of thing seems to be, no, you're going to get to have the same consciousness, all of your same experiences in the new body. Um, they don't have any scientific explanation for why that is as of yet, um, but maybe they'll come up with something. We'll just have to see. But the bigger point is that this belief that the Raelians have about the cloning and the passing on, whatever, it challenges traditional religious narratives. And that is kind of what the movement is all about. They want to change people's minds about our idea of creation and the nature of life. And all of this cloning and scientific advancement and all of that is just a way for them to transition away from the traditional religious concepts and move toward a more scientific and technological worldview. Cloning, particularly human cloning, which is still very taboo, is a way for them to sort of push the boundary of human understanding. And it aligns with their emphasis on science for science's sake and for reason. Because there really is no reason that we shouldn't be cloning humans, um, except for reasons of ethics, which are largely based in ideas that are not um, logical, right? It's the, their spiritual reasons, religious reasons. There's really no logical reason why we shouldn't be cloning humans. Now, do I think we should be cloning humans? Um, not really, but quite frankly, I can't fully articulate why. In 1998, as you may recall, scientists cloned a sheep named Dolly. This was a huge deal. It was the first time that we realized the full potential of cloning technology, chiefly that you could indeed clone a complex multicellular creature and have it turn out just fine. A fully formed and healthy specimen. And like I said, there's no reason to believe that this can't be done with a human being. But just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. And most places have laws against cloning full-on human beings. Now, here in the United States, we do have some things that we clone. I believe that we clone human stem cells, um, but I think that we recognize that that is different than cloning a whole-ass human baby. I'm pretty like 100 definitely percent sure um, that that is illegal here. And so far, no one has really tried to clone a human being. Uh, nobody except, you guessed it, the Raelians. They have a whole project with real life scientists dedicated to the pursuit of human cloning technology. And they call this clone aid. Okay, they're not good at naming things, all right? They just take what they're doing and add aid to the end of it. It's fine. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with researching human cloning, theoretically. But in 2002, the Raelian movement announced that they had successfully cloned a human baby named Eve. Again, a little on the nose, don't you think? They're not they're not creative, not with naming things. Now this announcement sparked significant controversy and a lot of skepticism in the scientific community. Now listen, there was a stunning lack of credible, independently verified evidence that they had actually done this. Many experts in the field questioned the feasibility of the Raelians' claims, chiefly because uh, they didn't provide any scientific data. They didn't provide any peer-reviewed research to support their assertion. But the announcement did garner widespread media attention, and it certainly broadened the reach of the Raelian movement. Media outlets and journalists covered this story. Rael himself appeared on 60 Minutes Australia to talk about their efforts. Despite the fact that most people found these claims completely unbelievable, the Raelians did get into a little hot water with some governments, with several regulatory bodies launching investigations into this. Now, nothing has ever come of it because there's absolutely no evidence at all that Clonade has actually cloned anything. It seems most likely that the Baby Eve announcement was an elaborately planned hoax, the intention of which was to bring international attention to the Raelian movement. 
perhaps to legitimize them or to gain more followers. And herein lies the primary and most damning controversy of this group. That Rael is at best completely crazy and at worst an out and out liar. His real name isn't even Rael. It's Claude Vorleon. And he was born in Vichy, France on September 30th, 1946 to Gerald Vorleon and Lucy Christophe. He received a Catholic education, but his family leaned a little more atheist. Um, it seems that he may have gone to a Catholic school. I think a lot of people in France go to Catholic schools. If you're French, correct me on that. Maybe they did at the time. Um, it's possible that his father had some Jewish ancestry. That's not really 100% known. But when Claude was growing up, he had a real love for music. He primarily played the guitar. He dreamed of being a pop star. And so when he was 15 years old, he packed up and put his freaking guitar on his back and he left and he went to Paris to try to make it big in the music industry. And he almost made it. He did a few records, he even had a song that made it to the top of the French pop charts in the 1960s. But by the end of the decade, with the death of his music producer, his music career dreams kind of fizzled out. Not to be deterred, Claude turned to his other passion, race cars. Now, ideally, he'd like to be racing them, but he didn't really have any like access in order to be able to do that. So he decided to create his own access by forming a race car enthusiast magazine called Autopop. He was the primary journalist of the magazine, and um, in this way, he would sometimes get the opportunity to go and drive these race cars uh, because he was writing articles for them for the magazine. Ultimately, though, the magazine was just not seeing the level of success that Claude had hoped. Luckily for him, in 1973, Yahweh, the Eloha, appeared to Claude to give him his true life's purpose. He closed the magazine, changed his name to Riel, and the rest, as they say, is history. He did have a wife at the time um, who did eventually leave him. Apparently, she didn't share his same vision for the future. Claude started publishing books under the name Riel, the first of which was The Book That Tells the Truth. Great. Nothing suspicious there. It says right on the cover, it's the truth. And after a couple of years, he claimed that he was met yet again by the Elohim. And this time, they took him back to their planet. They showed him all of their amazing technological advancements. And they also provided him with six beautiful alien produced sex robots to make love to him. Lucky guy. Apparently, this is sort of one of the ways in which this idea of sexual liberation came into the religion. Many people have criticized everything from his books to his description of the extraterrestrials as being borrowed or flat out plagiarized from other sources. And from what I could see, that is probably somewhat true. There's doesn't seem to be a lot of like truly original material there. Although he claims to be writing about his actual lived experience. This background certainly does paint a picture of a man who really wants to be in the limelight. And being the leader of a religious group certainly achieves that. As Riel, he lives in many ways like a pop star. He writes, plays, and sings music as part of the realist gatherings, and the free love aspect of this religion definitely gives him access to women. In fact, there's a whole group of women called the Order of Angels, and this group, the best way I can describe them, and I, I hope I don't offend anybody here, but my understanding of this group is that they're basically like sex nuns. According to Rael, although the Elohim love all humans equally, they prefer to spend time with the most beautiful, most aesthetically pleasing, most perfect humans. And so that's the idea of this Order of the Angels, that they are like the perfect specimens of human beauty. It's interesting to me that uh, the extraterrestrials idea of beauty so closely resembles Western European ideals of beauty, but hey, they created us, right? So who am I to judge? So the angels are part of the formal structure of the church, and as the angels age out of the group, they teach the younger incoming members. 
And then there are different tiers. There's a white feather, a pink feather, and a gold ribbon. White feather angels are allowed to have normal human relationships with whoever they choose. Pink feather angels are to reserve themselves for the Elohim, um, although they are allowed to have relations with other angels. They are intended to be the human consorts to the Elohim when the extraterrestrials return here to Earth, so they will sort of chaperone them to show them Earth ways. Now, the gold ribbon angels are the real cream of the crop. They are selected by Rael himself and represent the very most beautiful examples that humanity has to offer. Gold ribbon angels are meant to be the first ones to greet the Elohim when they come. They may only be intimate with the Elohim and, of course, Rael himself, with his dad being Yahweh and all that. Only women are selected to be angels because Rael says that the extraterrestrials are about 90% feminine energy and only about 10% masculine energy. They're far too delicate for human men who are just brimming with masculine energy. And I will point out that these women are chosen for both their external and internal beauty as it pertains to the teachings of realism. So ideally they would be pinnacles of nonviolence. They would be peaceful and would meditate, just be generally very feminine in their mindset. I would also like to note that trans women are welcome to become angels as well. They have had at least one trans woman who was an angel. Rael himself strives not to present as too macho or masculine in an effort to be more like the Elohim. The entire movement um, it really preaches the um, idea of gender fluidity. The Raelians believe that an overabundance of masculine energy makes us violent and that the Elohim have overcome this basically through the act of lovemaking. That's what they use to express themselves rather than violence, where humans tend to use violence and hate to express themselves more. This is one of the things that makes the Elohim more feminine than masculine. Again, all of this is according to Rael. So the lovemaking helps them harness love and peace instead of hate and violence. Um, at least this is my understanding of this concept. Hey, if there are any Raelians watching who want to jump in the comments and uh, correct me or expand on that, please do. We would all love to hear that. Okay, so I'm going to go into the formal structure of the church, and then we can talk about if this qualifies as a cult. Um, but first, I just want to real quick bring up something that is, for me, the most troubling aspect of the Raelian movement. They, like most religions, have a symbol. They have two, actually. The less common one is this sort of swirly star thing. It's kind of geometric and cute. We like it. But the original symbol, which is the most commonly used one still, I will not be showing you um, because it is a Star of David with a swastika in the middle of it. I don't want swastikas in any form anywhere near my page, so you can Google it if you want to see what it looks like. Rael claims that this design was on the spaceship of the Eloha Yahweh when they first made contact, and that the Elohim have approved it as the symbol for this religion. The Raelians maintain that swastika symbology was used for centuries as a symbol of peace and unity, and that the Nazis co-opted and corrupted it. Now, that is absolute undeniable fact. The reason that Hitler chose that particular sigil is because it was easily recognized the world over as an icon of peace. Sort of a doublespeak thing. It was propaganda. Since 1940, though, the swastika means one thing. Genocide. And those of us who have our heads screwed on straight have a visceral negative reaction to seeing it. The Raelians have a whole campaign aimed at taking back the original meaning. But one, 
That's never going to happen so long as it's still being used by fascists, which it is. And two, Rael is not Jewish. He might have some Jewish heritage, but he is not Jewish. And it's certainly not his symbol to take back, especially by bizarrely integrating it into a Star of David. Now, I'm not Jewish. I don't want to speak on behalf of any Jewish person, um, but I personally find it to be quite offensive. And I'm like, not an easy person to offend. In my opinion, it is a mar on an otherwise pretty okay group. They should consider just doing away with it and going to this. Okay, so now we've talked about that. That's out of the way. Not, I don't love that aspect of it. But let's talk about the Raelian hierarchy and how you can become a Raelian. So the vast majority of Raelians are just called Raelians. And then you have what I would refer to as like the Raelian clergy, and they're called the structure. This is a six-tiered hierarchy. Rael sits at the top of this and is called the Guide of Guides. He is re-elected to this position every seven years by higher up members of the structure. Under Rael, there are bishop guides, priest guides, animators, assistant animators, and probationers. The guides are expected to be pretty strict about the rules, including abstaining from alcohol and caffeine consumption. Three of the bishops constitute something they call the Council of the Wise. Their job is to deal with transgressions within the group. Now, Raelians are not highly punitive. If people have been breaking the rules bad enough, they're generally just excommunicated from the church. Most of the rules are just guidelines for living in the Raelian way, um, but members of the structure are treated uh, with a little more strict adherence. The main things that a person might be excommunicated for uh, would be things like incest, uh, sexual assault, and transgressions against children. These are really the big three no-nos of Raelianism, and they're, they're pretty good no-nos to take a hard line on, if you ask me. Now, depending on the severity of the transgression, you might be invited to come back into the church after seven years. This is part of the Raelian belief that that's how long it takes all the cells in the human body to regenerate. So ostensibly after seven years, you're technically a new person and may be welcomed back into the church. I assume this option would not be open to kitty touchers because Rael himself has said that people who do that should be castrated and then put in a mental institution. So there seems to be very little tolerance for that kind of behavior within this organization. And frankly, that's very heartening to hear. According to the latest data that I could find, which was for 2007, which has been quite some time ago, so this number has changed, but uh, at least at that time, there were about 2,300 members of the overall structure, with 170 of those being guides, 41 of those being bishops. So that would be um, 41 who are the highest level that you can achieve in realism, other than being real himself. Now that, my friends, is a very decently sized organization. Again, I was so shocked when um, I have a friend who brought me this group. I had never heard of them before um, until he was like, hey, you should talk about the Raelians. And I'm so glad he did because they're, re they're really interesting. Rael is a, a fascinating guy. But that's a lot of people. Like that's a that's a pretty big internal structure for a group I've never heard of before. Like they might have as many as 100,000 members worldwide. That's a very significant movement. So I know what you're thinking. Well, how can I become a Raelian then? Well, first of all, you need to know that there is a yearly membership fee. And as I mentioned, full members are encouraged to tithe 10% of their yearly income. Although this rule, quote rule, is in no way enforced, and Rael himself says that he thinks about 60% of their members do not adhere to this policy. In other words, it's completely voluntary. 
The money brought into the organization is divided up by 3% going to the national branch of wherever you happen to be, 7% going to like the international central administration, and then up to 1% going to Rael himself. And then of course, sales of his books also go towards the income of the movement. So now you're prepared to tithe and you know where your money is going to and you need a Raelian baptism. This is called transmission and it's performed by either bishops or priests. These initiations take place at the annual seminars that are held all over the world based on the Raelian calendar's four major holidays. There's the first Sunday in April, which is the day that the Elohim created Adam and Eve. There's August 6th, which is the day that the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, and that marks the beginning of the Raelian calendar. Um, I didn't strictly understand this, but it seems that they count their year from that day um, because that ushered in this era of violence and chaos that we're currently living in, and that is going to be corrected by the Elohim when they come back to Earth and usher in an era of utopia. You can see my kitty back here. She's very cute, but she's not a very nice person. There's also October 7th, which is the date that the Elohim picked up Rael for the second time when they actually took him to their planet. And then the final holiday is on December 13th, which is the first time that Rael met the Elohim. For this baptism ritual, the bishop or priest has to place their hands on the head of the person who is ready to convert. And then they meditate while holding the top of your head. And they meditate to transmit messages to the Elohim. And what they're doing is they're transmitting your genetic code to the Elohim so that the extraterrestrials can make a record of your genetic code and know that you are a believer. So then when they do return to Earth, they're going to recognize you. And as I've said before, those who are considered worthy will receive everlasting life. And this determination can only be made by the Elohim when they return. And that's it. It's really quite simple. With that, you become a Raelian. Now the question remains, is Raelism a legitimate sect or is it a crazy UFO sex cult? One of the things that separates a religion from a cult, possibly the only thing that separates those two, is the level of control that is exerted over the daily lives of the members. A cult is a high control group by definition. There are high control groups that aren't necessarily cults, but a cult is a high control group. The members of cults are not really free. They use brainwashing techniques, including severe isolation and punishment. They have strict rules that control the actions, the minds, the bodies of their followers. They tend to be very secretive. They usually have a single charismatic leader who is thought of as some kind of deity. And they are frequently, not always, but frequently, usually involved in some kind of illegal activity. Certainly, the Raelians do have a charismatic leader who claims to be descendant from the original creators of human beings, which I suppose that does kind of deify him. But other than that, I don't really see much similarity between the Raelians and cultish behavior. As far as I can tell, the adherents of Raelism are of sound mind and they're practicing of their own free will. They can leave the church anytime they want without repercussion. The tenets of the religion are suggestions for how you can live life in the Raelian way. They're not punishable offenses, with the exception of the few that I laid out earlier, which are, by the way, illegal for everyone. There's no us versus them mentality. The members aren't sequestered away from society, with the exception of um, some 
of the women in the Order of Angels um, do sequester, but they're sequestering themselves. They're not being forced to sequester. They're voluntarily sequestering themselves from society, just like nuns do. And the Raelians don't seem to be hiding anything. If anything, they're very open about their beliefs. They certainly don't seem to be exploiting any vulnerable populations. So unless something really terrible comes out about them, I, I think that we can safely say that the Raelians qualify as a bona fide New Age religion. Even though their ideas might seem a little strange to us, I think that they should just be left alone and continue to go about their business doing what makes them happy. They are not harming anyone. And finally, I want to talk about how true are the claims of the Raelians? Are we really descended from extraterrestrials? Well, first of all, the Raelians are not the only group of people who think that this is a possibility. Rael may have created a whole religion around the concept, but ancient astronaut theorists have been talking about this for decades. The idea that humans were possibly made by an alien race is not new. Recently, as I mentioned, there's been talk in the upper levels of government about unidentified aerial phenomenon and non-human organic material. No one has said that the Earth has come in contact with an advanced extraterrestrial species, uh, but no one has said we haven't either. And is what they believe really that crazy? Do any of the predominant mainstream religions sound any less nutty to the non-believer? I can tell you as a non-believer myself that they don't. They all sound exactly as crazy as this. But I have to say, I do, this is just my personal opinion, I do think that Rael has um, made up all of this stuff about having contact with the Elohim. Don't think he met Yahweh. I don't think he traveled to another planet. I don't think he's the half-brother of Jesus Christ. But like, so what? Newsflash, every religion is made up. The objective existence of of a higher power notwithstanding. Every religion, the dogma, the rules, the rituals, the music, the prayers, what they call members of the clergy, who is and isn't allowed to participate, all of that is just made up by some guy. Look, I don't know if there's a god or gods or aliens or a flying spaghetti monster, okay? But I do know that the point of religion is to help human beings make sense of things that are unknowable in a way that feels good to the individual, to find community and serve a common purpose. As long as all activities are consensual and you're not doing any harm, I say go for it. Every Raelian practices because they want to. There's no punishment for leaving, no requirement to participate in any of their rituals. You just pay your dues and not be a piece of crap. Quite frankly, they seem to be less damaging than some mainstream religions out there or more mainstream religions out there. And the real kicker is many Raelians really don't care if Rael is telling the truth or not. They are grateful for what their community has given them regardless of Rael's claims. Many who belong to mainstream religions don't really believe either, but they continue to participate because they're getting something out of it anyway. The truth doesn't matter so much as the possibility. And just as no one can disprove the existence of God, no one can disprove the existence of the Elohim. You can't prove it either. That's why it's called faith. So again, to me, they're a legitimate new age religion, not a cult. If anything else comes out about this group that's more dubious, I will be sure to update you. But I really want to know what you think. So make sure to leave it in the comments below. Do you think that Rael is crazy? Do you think that he really had an experience with extraterrestrials? I want to know. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Other than that, just be sure to do something to take care of yourself today and every day, and I will see you next time. Bye!